I'm Fraser. Uh, I'm 18 now. I started when I was 14. And I'm going to hopefully quickly tell you my life story in the next 10 minutes. Um, I'd say I've always been an entrepreneur and from a really young age was involved in money-making projects. Um, I think probably the earliest example of which was when I was about eight and uh, with the help of a couple of friends baked some muffins, cakes and shortbread and sold them at the school bake sale. I think we made about 20 quid and gave the money to Greenpeace, but that was my first ever <laughs> taste of enterprise. Following on from that, I developed an obsession with coming up with ideas and probably the most harebrained of all was when I was about 10 and visited a farm with a friend. We got a box of eggs and I took them home and explained to my parents that I wanted to hatch them out and start a chicken farm in the back garden. <laughs> Needless to say, my parents weren't very keen on that idea, but let me give it a shot, not expecting me to be successful. Anyway, I put the eggs on top of the Sky TV box where it was quite warm and <laughs> a few weeks later, four of the eggs hatched, which I raised in the back garden and within a few months they were laying eggs, which I sold to the neighbours. <laughs> So unfortunately, my chicken farming career was uh, sadly cut short when the local fox decided to eat my chickens for dinner. But um, as, as upsetting and, and tragic as that was, it didn't put me off entirely, and I continued to come up with more and more business ideas. For about a year, I sold bacon and sausages door to door for a local butcher, and that taught me a lot about sales and dealing with customers. I became certain that I wanted to start my own real business, and at the age of 14, decided to take the plunge. So it all started when my gran taught me how to make jam using her secret recipes. Um, that's a picture of my gran there. She's, she's the one in the middle. Um, <laughs> I, I, I started out making, making jam with my gran's recipes in the, in the kitchen at home, uh, selling them to the neighbours and later at church fairs, farmers markets and to local delicatessens. Uh, the local papers soon took an interest in the story of a young lad taking his gran's recipes and turning them into a thriving business. And that's an article from when I was about 15 in the Edinburgh Evening News. Um, so following the excitement of being featured in the bastion of journalistic excellence that is the Edinburgh Evening News, and also having won a national award for enterprise presented to me by Gordon Brown, I decided to leave school and work full time on my business. I was only 16 at the time, but I was completely sure that I could turn my jam making hobby into my career. So I soon found myself working all day every day in my parents' tiny kitchen, cooking up to a thousand jars of jam a week. Needless to say, they were never getting into the kitchen to cook the dinner, and I soon had to come up with an imaginative idea in order to move production into a commercial setting. So I did a lot of research and I discovered that sales of jam have been in decline for the past couple of decades. And that's mostly because uh, jam's got a very unhealthy and old fashioned image. Usually when people think of jam, they associate it with old women, church fairs and afternoon tea. So I set myself the ambition of trying to completely reinvent the world of jam by coming up with a healthier and more modern brand. Hundreds of batches and dozens of recipes later, I came up with the solution of using grape juice as a sweetener rather than refined sugars or anything artificial. And I soon had a few flavours that I thought, thought tasted great and probably naively decided that I wanted to supply them to the big supermarkets. This was something that no teenager had ever done before and Channel 4 asked if they could follow me around for six months to make a documentary about it. So that added a little bit of pressure. So I was then invited to a Waitrose Meet the Bar Day, which was kind of like the, the pop idol for selling products to supermarkets. And um, I was given 10 minutes of a senior buyer's time to pitch my idea. He said, he said it was a fantastic idea and he just loved the whole, and he, um, he said it was really refreshing to see a teenager coming along and trying to reinvent something that's been around for hundreds of years. But he said that uh, there was a, a long way to go until I would have a product that was ready to sit on the shelves of Waitrose. I would have to set up production, create a brand and do a bit more work on the recipes before he would be happy. And although there was a long way to go, he promised that if I did a good job of those three things, he would consider listing my, my jam in all of the Waitrose stores. So in the back of that meeting, I decided to put everything I had into trying to create a product the Waitrose would be happy with. And a lot of my mentors at the time felt that that was a risky strategy. I was putting all my eggs in one basket just on the basis of one meeting with a supermarket. But supplying supermarkets was my dream and I thought I could do it. So I, I was then studying accountancy full time at university and began by trying to create the Super Jam brand. So I contacted a whole load of design agencies, trying to convince somebody to work with me cheaply. Um, needless to say, as a teenager, I didn't have access to vast sums of money, and the 20, 30, and even 40,000 pound quotes that many agencies provided me with were somewhat out with my budget. But I, I persevered and eventually came across a local ad agency who offered to work with me for free. Um, they did that because they really believed that Super Jam would be a big success and that they would benefit in the future from repeat business. Um, there's obviously a link between Super Jam and Superman, so the designers and I um, thought it would be really fun to create the branding around a comic book theme. We had a lot of fun writing the copy and, <laughs> and excitedly spoke of um, creating a superhero-esque costume for me, the Jam Boy, to wear at the lunch of Super Jam. Um, so we then had a set of labels that I thought looked really cool. And 
I started to try and solve the slight problem, problem of how I was going to produce hundreds of thousands of jars of super jam to supply to the supermarkets. So I travelled around the country from the tiny little islands off the north coast of Scotland to the big cities of England, trying to convince somebody to work with me to produce super jam. Obviously, all the big companies were a bit sceptical of this teenager coming along with no capital, no experience, and in fact, little more than just a set of recipes and a, a vague ambition to change the world of jam. Um, eventually, I came across one factory who had suffered from the decline in jam sales and felt that Super Jam was the answer to uh, their, their problems. A few months later, we'd figured out how to produce the recipes on a big scale, and I believed we were ready to supply Waitrose. The bar didn't agree. Um, <laughs> He explained to me that the fact that Super Jam was made entirely from fruit, um, better for you than other brands of jam, and generally very high quality, had been completely lost in amongst the humour of the comic book theme. He also said that labels, uh, the, the factor I'd chosen was too expensive and that he didn't like all the flavours I'd made. So basically everything I'd just spent six months working on had to be thrown in the bin and I started all over again. So I travelled around a whole load more factories and eventually convinced another one to work with me. The designers and I sat down and had a really good think about who we were trying to communicate with. Who was going to buy Super Jam? We clarified to ourselves there wasn't kids and teenagers who may well have found the comic book theme funny, but it was adults, and we'd have a matter of seconds to communicate to them that Super Jam was better for them than other brands of jam. <coughs> so having taken that new approach, the designers came up with a set of labels that we were really happy with, and a website that looked pretty cool. Uh, we even put a blog on the website that I was planning to update every few days with my news and stories and, um, and it, all of that captured the imagination of Waitrose and they agreed to launch Super Jam in most of their stores in March this year um, which was accompanied, accompanied by extensive media coverage. I found myself being interviewed by newspapers in Taiwan to radio stations in Canada and at one point it was giving over 20 interviews a day. Anyway, in order to capitalise on all of that, I decided to travel around the country visiting the big Waitrose stores. Um, I went to about 40, handing out samples, signing jars of jam, and discussing jam making with tens of thousands of old women. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, need, need, needless to say, the products flew off the shelves, and we've now sold about 200,000 jars. Um, following the success of Super Jam and Waitrose, Tesco, one of the biggest supermarkets in the world, got in touch and asked if they too could stock the range. Three phone calls later, and without even needing to meet with them, Tesco agreed to launch Super Jam in 300 of their stores a couple of weeks ago. And again, that's been a huge success and covered extensively in the media. Um, as a result of this runaway success, I've been gratefully received a number of awards. Um, I won't talk about all of them, but... Um, for example, last week I had to go to Chicago for the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards, and as the name suggests, that's a worldwide competition for students who run their own businesses. Um, all the other students were sort of running dot-com businesses and really high-tech inventions and all sorts of things. I was there with the jam. And <laughs> anyway, so it, it ended up winning. That was, that was great. Um, thank you. <laughs> Um, so, from the point of view of sales, media coverage, and even winning awards, the business has been a major success. But, as is always the case, there have been a number of disasters along the way. Probably the best example of which was the closure of the factory that up until recently I'd been using to make Super Jam. That was as a result of a takeover by a bigger company, and meant that I had to really quickly figure out how to move production from one site to another. Um, Although that was something of a challenge and could have resulted in disaster, it meant that I was able to find a better factory. Um, and so Super Jam is now being produced in one of the most efficient jam plants in Europe, and we're in a really strong position to grow the business. So thinking about the future, um, Super Jam is now in Waitrose and Tesco, and I've met with Asda and Sainsbury's and, and all the other supermarkets, and they're all very keen on it. Um, thinking about my career in the future, I hope to develop other products in different food categories that have perhaps been in decline or have gone out of favour, um, you know, particularly products that are unhealthy and you know, I want to try and reinvigorate them, make them healthier and, and more modern and so on. Um, I've had help and advice from a lot of people to do all of this, um, other entrepreneurs, my university and, and so on. Um, and I think mentorship is a really important concept for, for young entrepreneurs. Um, Starting my own business is something that's given me a lot of satisfaction. I've had a huge amount of fun doing, and I spend a lot of time encouraging other young people to give it a shot. Um, so I regularly kind of talk at schools and that kind of thing. Um, so just to kind of summarise, it's been a big success and a big adventure. Um, but for me, the exciting thing is thinking about what to do next. So thank you. Brilliant.